have got Marine Lord versus Doubt, and it is going to be on the pit. Now, we did cast these guys a few days back, actually, in a matchup on Altai. Uh, this map a lot more open, though. In that map, we saw a lot of aggression coming out from Doubt up against uh, an eco-booming English. This time around, Marine Lord is playing a Sif that might even be more inclined to eco-boom. It is the HRE, while Doubt has taken the French. The French are Sif that, if we're being totally honest, has suffered immensely in uh, recent weeks. But we started to see hopes for Ash. I think like if you look at what we saw with the Road to Wall Law, we're starting to see people uh, convert Me. this into a formidable force and feudal, usually off the back of the Holy Trinity build, which is where you go for the barracks, archery range, and the stables, um, as opposed to the older build, which I think falls flat too often right now, which is stables, archery ranges, spam. And the whole idea is that you actually unburden yourself. Usually when you do this archery range stable spam, you try to keep it a 50-50 ratio, but by doing so, you spend way too much on cavalry units that can get counted, and then each one going down feels doubly painful to anything else in your army dying. Well, by going for spears as well, you kind of balance the ratio a little bit more. You give yourself counters to everything, and you also still have this premium unit. I think actually kind of a, a mistake that we've seen made by a lot of French players at the moment is that they're still treating the French cavalry is the backbone of their army, when really it should be what it functioned as in real life armies, a lot of real life armies anyway, which is this premium element, right? This kind of X factor, this flank attack or whatever you, name you want to give it to. It wasn't the, the backbone of the army. Spearmen, you know, men at arms, archers in real life would have been, of course, spearmen and, and archers are the choice you have as the French. And I think it's a lot healthier of a composition. Um, and I think it's a better way to actually approach this stage of the game especially up against the HRE. I actually think the new comp, the Holy Trinity comp, actually functions a lot better against the HRE than the one you punch, simply because the HRE is not scared to push mass spearmen and horsemen and will outmass you due to their better economy. And once they do outmass you in just horsemen alone, they can actually overwhelm both your knights and your archers. So the spearman layer becomes even more important. And even the spearman element of, of the HRE, if they do just go to that one-two punch, it's not just that the horsemen, they can mass enough to counter both of the things you do by default as the French. It's also the fact that the other thing they bring in, if they bring those spears, are moving a lot quicker than other Sifts, right? It's not as powerful as the Abbasids with their juiced up attack range on the Phalanx Spears. What it is, though, is it's kind of a median ground where you're able to gap close. And I think, actually, in some situations, that can be even more important, especially if you're on the defensive. The ability to move quicker with marching drills actually is better than what Phalanx offers because it allows you to optimize your defense with less Spears. And why that optimization is kind of crazy important is it means that you can actually budget your defense force to the HRE by having less Spears than a Basset would and then with your superior gathering rates to even what the Abbasids have on food, push even more horsemen than they would. It's pretty interesting dynamics to think about. Let's see how we're gonna proceed though, because of course there is always that temptation. Like we highlighted last time we watched these two players go at it. Our Frenchman who's not playing as the French did decide to go for a quick castle age. That was a English Abbasid matchup with Marine Lord and the English. Very close game, very tight game. If you haven't seen it already, I definitely advise going and see it, uh, go, going and watching it. It's very difficult to make a castle age rush in this current meta, but I do think Marine Lord has some variance builds that allow for it. And I also think Dao is maybe sometimes over leveraged into his feudal aggression to a downside, if that makes sense, right? Like we've seen players where they'll allow their opponent to go castle first and they'll still feel feudal aggression, but they'll head towards castle themselves while also taking away a chunk of their opponent's base. I think what we see from Dao is a little bit more in the I'm going to stay here forever stage, right? Like castles are cursed for me, so why would I want them? He just all ends on feudal. I actually think this is a sieve that he's chosen that can work for that. You still want to look for that optimization though, where eventually you've chipped away enough of your opponent's economy that you can go for castle without sacrificing your aggression. Another thing I'm looking towards is whether Marine Lord is going to opt into some early walling. We'd love to see a wall here. Kind of surprised it hasn't come out yet. But then again, like there's no rush until the tech up completes. This wall is insanely valuable. It blocks out a night raid on the north side, allows you to easily maintain your gold. Then you can optimize with Spearman like we talked about. We have two or three in this choke point here. And your main army can be patrolling around. It limits the points of access, especially if Marine Lord then follows it up with another wall on this side of the Arkin. At that stage, he has a fully condensed base, and the only way that Doubt should realistically be able to shut down the economy of the HRE is if he finds a way of breaching through the walls, and that's just not gonna happen, because you know that Marine Lord's gonna be guarding with at least a few spears. It's 
down, of course, making his way up. Love that we got the wheelbarrow. You know me, I'm a fan of wheelbarrow being complete before you tech up. However, he could maybe optimize this a bit better. It looks like Doubt may have went for the wheelbarrow before you even start the tech up or at the beginning, which would have slightly delayed his completion. I also noticed a lot of gold coming out. This is a, a little bit over the top, out of doubt. It looks like he is going for a double TC build in this game. Kind of intrigued by the choice of gold, though. Like, he'll invest into the Knights. I guess the logic here might be that he gets enough gold to get two or three Knights out and then pulls all the villagers across to the stone line to gather for the TC quicker. Not a bad idea, actually. And it would make sense if you look at the numbers. Doubt is already halfway towards the wood required for that town center. Likely to drop up here as well. Look at what he's got. Gold, deer, and second deer stack. So this is nine deer. Uh, sorry, not nine, nine deer. Ten deer here which is going to be a ridiculous 3.5k food. He's got the gold, and he also insulates his wood line in this situation where maybe down the line, Marine Lord starts to go into his own raid force. However, looks like he won't be able to deny the vision given over as Marine Lord did wrap Northside first. Love this choice, actually. Uh, Marine Lord would have scouted the entire map once over, and once you've done that, when you loop around again, like wherever you come east or west side against the French should be based on where their stone is, not as much as their gold, because the gold is kind of a given. Like, either your opponent is hard on the stone, so maybe he's not pushing knights, but you get that info by going on the stone, or you just wrap around towards the gold, say if it's on the other side, and say, oh, he's on gold anyway, which is always going to happen, right? There, there isn't many games I can recall where in the first 10 minutes, a French player is not gathering gold unless he gets blocked off. The more key details where the stone outcropping is, which is why he looped the scout the way he did. No doubt. With his own scout, he's going to see what's coming out. I actually didn't mean to rhyme like that. Uh, Marine Lord is moving out for a TC drop, and he wants the ball plus the deer. Problem is with the spears guarding, I don't think there's anything you can do to stop this either. So Doubt is just going to have to accept this. This is the reality of going for the second TC. You slow down your own scalability, in fact, if you looked out right now, only has two Royal Knights in the field. And even if you tried to rush them over here now, by the time they arrive, the TC's already going up. Especially with additional Spears coming out. Let's see. Actually going for that ball straight away. Even bought the Prelate, so this becomes impossible for Doubt to snipe. In fact, if Doubt tries to go into this, I think he's actually just going to be throwing away Royal Knights for nothing. There we go. Completion of the kill comes out. Prelate healing in the meantime. Does not feel good to be healing scouts, especially with the passive heal being nerfed so hard. In the meantime, a wraparound, and I love this choice out of doubt. He goes straight into the eco line. Marine Lord wasn't looking, however, neither was doubt. Did not get the charge off. Big detail there means he can't even come close to killing a villager. I would love to see Marine Lord just pull out the prelate and heal the damage off here, by the way. Remember that Holy Inspiration lasts, it lingers, it doesn't just instantly go away. So if you actually want to be optimal here, if you were feeling up to the micro task, you could just start pulling the prelate out, heal, then banking back in, and it would actually prevent doubt from ever sniping villagers. Speaking of sniping, his attempts are getting a little bit lackluster. Yeah, dude, I mean, honestly, like th this is what I was concerned about, like the choke. The weird part is doubt knows about the north side, but hasn't used it yet. He could actually bring a knight each side and then draw the spearman out so that there's either only one guarding each side or they chase after one and the other one gets in. Instead, it kind of feels like he missed his opportunity, though. That did go for that deer stack in the end. I'm a little bit surprised the way he done this. I think it might have been better to actually place it between the two and then just pushed in with a scout just to keep that prolonged value. Not to mention it just kind of condenses you. It limits angles of approach and at the same time puts you close enough that you can gather on the gold in the north if need be and still retreat to safety in the TC. Speaking of TCs, Doubt isn't done yet, guys. <laughs> Okay, this is getting a little bit too greedy. He's going for another TC. I think the reasoning behind this is he saw that Marine Lord went for the secondary one and wants to try and stay ahead. The issue with this is it's kind of a hard bait for yourself. Marine Lord already gets insane value because he's on the ball with the Holy Inspiration. He's actually going to inflate himself towards Castle much quicker than you are now. And I think actually by going for this third TC, you've sacrificed your ability to either Castle yourself or build an amassment of troops to threaten. Right now, the mistake that Doubt's falling into is he's going for that standardized knight formation. It's already been counted out by Spears, and we haven't seen the secondary transition yet. In fact, I don't think we're going to see a transition anytime soon due to this third TC. Oh, my, my apologies, folks. The transition is more villages. Yeah, that should have fell flat because it, it, it will fall flat. There's a point at which you're being too greedy, and I think we are skirting that line now with Doubt. Especially against the HRE. I mean, this is a sieve that's just infamous for always outscaling. 
right? Unless you apply pressure. And to his credit, Doubt tried, right? He brought in the Knights. But if he lived in a swamp, what he would learn very quickly is you do or do not. There is no try. And in this situation, he did not. He did not succeed in harassing. He was a little bit off the mark. He didn't get one or two raid-ins. The blocks are good for Marine Lord. Like, overall, this game looks very frustrating for Doubt to play. I think he's actually aware he's going to be playing catch-up. And he might have no choice but to just try and prioritize the relics now. And the issue with that is because Marine Lord went so early into the racks, if you look, you can see the Spearman count is actually high enough that he can guard the relics. Not only that, but by playing a TC out here onto the Sacred Site, look at what he secured. Marine Lord has very easy access to free relics on this side. Fourth one, closer to his base, and then the fifth one, neck and neck between the two, does feel like this could easily transition into a four relic game for the HRE, especially with Marine Lord now making his way up with that Radiant's Cathedral. That, of course, not looking to left, be left behind. We'll go for the Guild Hall. I actually prefer the Guild Hall here. Um, the issue with going for the Royal Institute is it baits you further into this black hole of resources, which is the Royal Knights. And I think actually Royal Knights will lose you this game. It would be nice to have the Arbitrary upgrades. I will admit that. But your Arbitrary is still going to be formidable even without those upgrades at this stage because what you're up against is a Civ that likes to push heavy infantry, right? And heavy cavalry. And the Arbiter Triers do a phenomenal job of trading out there and also are insulated against the risk of an HRE flag going for the archery range. We don't see it often, and I don't expect it in this game, but it's just a nice complementary element of playing the French. Nice outpost as well, I doubt. Blocking two relics. Actually, I don't even think he blocked two is the problem, though. Definitely doesn't now. It's just a little bit too late. Even then, I mean, it's a 90 health unit. You wouldn't have stopped him. So Prolet's starting to pick up. Would love to see Marine Lord send one north side. And yep, he do, he knows. He's like, while his attention is drawn here, however, the timing could work against him. That's Some questions so asking about when this game happened. I think this happened just before the weekend. So just before uh, the Road to World Law Weekly. I think it was on maybe early Saturday. Or possibly late Friday. <laughs> Marine Lord. That will say see you next Saturday with this prelate. No way he's going to be able to survive that. Spearman a little bit too late. Marine Lord, the right idea, but the wrong timing. Didn't expect the Knights to already be in position, but because they're in position north side, it does mean that nothing is guarded south side. So this should still be a free relic grab at least. The moment Marine Lord is taking his time, but this will escalate. I actually think the issue with the HRE is if you don't address the relics straight away and find a way of sucking them up yourself, uh, they just disappear because of this change with the Regnants. It's such a big change. You're now dealing with a Civ that doesn't just rely on one or two Prelates trying to budget them out of the TC. They just stop spam clicking because the moment they get one of these Relics banked, they can afford to push their Prelates, right? Remember one, Relic's gonna give 200 gold and they can push for 100 gold every 20 seconds. So by the time you have two Relics, you're infinitely pushing Prelates. Raid in, Doubt did find his way past this. Looks like the Spearman were caught out of position, took a bad fight. Lodal needs to kill some units here for this to be worthwhile because it looks like he actually traded about even Spears to Knights, which is just not good here. The Spears are so much cheaper. In the meantime, a march in with the remaining Spears. Marino goes on the offensive. I love this play. He knows what Doubt needs to do. He knows the only way that Doubt can actually block the scalability and, uh, and stop the HRE from being strong in the late game is if he takes the relics away. So he snipes in, he takes out the monastery, and all of a sudden, Doubt lacking the ability to remove these relics as a variable. He can guard them, but he can't take them away. And long term, that is bad for him because Marine Lord can just build cheap spears to take out your defense force here. Because remember, right now, Doubt is still wholly reliant on knights. In fact, it's the only thing he's pushing. This defensive keep can't get much more defensive. You realize how uncomfortable this is. The good news, at least for Doubt, is he is going to get a discount on his knights. The bad news is it's going to encourage him to push more knights. And the knights right now are losing Doubt this game. Make no mistake about it. I said it several minutes ago, and I stand by it. Knights are the reason why Doubt could very easily end up losing this game. Raiden. Swing of Knights. Looks like Marine Lord did get one himself. The Spearman poking and prodding, and Doubt slow to react here. We'll go for the garrison. Not enough room for everyone, though, so it's going to be an eco chip away. And he'll even hang around, torch down the TC, and why not? This many Spears, this many Troopers here. Villagers getting their shivs out going, come on then. I don't think you want to, though. Problem is, you'll die way too quick. No textiles from Doubt, yet here he is just trying to tank the fire coming in. The Knights can't match this either. It's just too many Spears, and Doubt. 
feeling like unless he makes a hard transition fast, this game could easily already be over. Walk down, continues. 12 spears, three horsemen and a knight remain. That's enough to take out this TC. It sounds like a joke, but it's enough to, to make doubt look like a joke right now, forcing the fight out of him. Knight's going in, but you can see it's an insta-pinch. One going down, two heavily injured. This town center cannot be protected, and Doubt has not built a big enough eco lead to justify, especially after all the villages he just sacrificed. And the one's still to sacrifice yet, because as soon as this TC goes down, 10 spearmen, a knight, this could be three or four more villages, especially with how they come out. The exit point, a little bit frustrating here. Two more villages are going to be pinched, and Doubt will eventually clean up this army, but the damage already feels done. Second wave now coming in as Marine Lord pinches onto the berry line ahead of the transition and doubt it's beginning to all fall apart i mean they you know why they call him doubt because in these situations we always have our doubt usually he finds a way to overcome it but i don't think he could overcome my doubt in this one it's such a big lead to face up against i mean it's 20 more military pop cap the eco lead is growing for marine lord and alongside that his relic count as well a raid in once again as doubt gets found I, they, they just call it, this is pretty much done. You're dancing around your own base to Marine Lord's tunes, and in the meantime, Marine Lord barely invested in more military. He gathered enough for a tech up, and now he's going up. He's banked four of the five relics on this map. He's already heading up now with the Palace of Swabia, and you haven't even cleaned up the army in your own base. In fact, Marine Lord is still standing with that army, all because doubt seems to think that knights are everything. I'm starting to get where the, the Silver Surfers on Reddit get their ideas from. Because if, if Dao is saying that Knights just win, Knights just win, right? And maybe they do. Maybe we're just wrong. Maybe the reason why Marine Lord won is because he had Knights as well. No. Guys, I'm telling you, Knights lost Doubt this game. It just, I, I'm perplexed. I mean, even with a discount. Even with the discount you get, why? Why so many knights? I can't... I, 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 it's discombobulated from the game plan. It, it just doesn't make sense. Like, he could build archer ranges here. He could get archers to count this out and then go arbitrary. Both are going to be discount. Both will be better. Instead, finally, Marine Lord's army is going to die. But the damage done just feels irreparable for doubt. And you know, maybe this night mask can work if you build it up to a high enough count, but every time running in with three or four knights and dying like this, it's, I mean, honestly, the, the only appropriate thing in this situation would be the horses going and shaking their head. Because I'd be disappointed too. I mean, doubt he's now an age behind and not just a half an age or, or close. Like you can see he's got a lot of gold, but like, there's no way he reaches Imperial Age in this game. He needs to double down. He's over calibrating the gold. He got shut down his food and wood lines. And that, by the way, is what I want to give so much credit to Marine Lord for. He targeted the critical ingredient to scalability for doubt. By taking out the TC, by drawing all attention here, sniping out villages on the wood line, he shut down not only the wood required for a transition further for doubt, he also shut down the way that he would scale his food by going to farms. And that is why Doubt looks a mile and a half behind Marine Lord now. In fact, mile and a half doesn't do it justice. He's five countries over. Like right now, they're racing from France to Poland. And somehow in that race, Doubt has found himself in Spain. Make that Portugal. It's just getting worse and worse. I mean, Doubt, if he wants to recover this game, he needs more than one punch. I feel like Spearmen are killing more villagers than Knights in this game. No, they, they actually definitely have this entire game. That's going to continue as well. Ay caramba, doubt. Not even really reacting quickly anymore. He's getting pulled apart by Marine Lord. He's trying to optimize the few Knights he has. It means just a few Spearmen are pinching double the amount of villagers that his Knights are capable of. Maybe even more. Now the Elite Spearmen versus the Veteran Royal Knights, it just becomes such a one-sided affair. I mean, I'm trying to think like what the recovery point really is for Doubt. Hey, the Guildhall's food is not going to save you. I do feel like a broken record, but realistically, it does come down to his lack of willingness to change unit type. 
Because the, the whole logic of building this many knights is to keep your opponent on defensive. He hasn't actually done that, though. Think about what the last several minutes have been. Marine Lord has raided in with spears consistently. So this knight idea should have stopped about five minutes ago when you realize your opponent's diving your base. And oh, God. Yep, that's... I mean, that you have no answer now. I think you should realize it now. Lagstick in the mix. Spearman. Even Prelates now here because they have nothing else to do. Doubt. He shares that sentiment. He has nothing else to do in this game. No answer to the mass Spearman. <laughs> Marine Lord just makes it look so small brain. I have Pokey Stick. You die. Oh, man. I, yeah, I'm a little bit perplexed by doubt in this game. I mean, this doesn't feel like one of the Gs of, of AoE. Um, I'm trying to think, like, even back when he used to play, like, Knights, yeah, they were strong, but you still needed a transition. Maybe it's kind of like the, the first week release, like, mentality. is like, Knights are still this way, but I'm just going to TC Boom so I can build more Knights. I've seen this a few times as well. And I think the awkward part is we've actually seen... Um, Recently, like the best players in the game lose because of this kind of mentality. Dookie, dookie, if you guys dookie, remember, dookie, 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 dookie. shout out to Gravix, by the way. Thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate it, man. Uh, but if you guys remember Vortex, I, I talked a lot about this in his performance against Puppy Paw in the Grand Finals in Game 1, where he just kept massing knights and he was wasting them. He was just throwing them into armies and dying, right? This was like the extreme version of that. Like, I did not see the raid value in this game at any point from doubt. He tried early on. Marine Lord matched it and he actually like completely blocked it out and at that point doubt should have been like i need a transition and he did he's like my transition is more tcs more eco which can work but you do eventually have to make a military transition and we never saw that the only way i think you can even remotely justify going for mass knights still is if you go raw institute for the raw bloodlines he didn't do that either this was a guild hall build, which means that you're less attached to the, the romanticized idea of French knights and actually should have more freedom to go into other unit types. The fact we didn't see that, I think, is why this was way too easy. It was way too trivial. And you have to think about the knock-on effect. Like, Marine Lord is countering these knights with the cheapest unit possible. By doing so, he's escalating his eco at a faster pace to allow for that tech unlock into Imperial, at which stage this cheap unit becomes even better with the extra melee resistance. And once again... You're sitting there with only knights, only a melee unit to counter out a unit that is even stronger against you now. It's a bit perplexing, out of doubt. I mean, I was expecting something a little bit more evolutionary. Hopefully, we see something more evolutionary. If the dude wants to make it to Wall Law for Age Vampires 4, he's definitely going to have to evolve the way he plays the French.